Okay. So good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, good morning to all the online students as well as to those who've joined us on the e-learning portal. Um, I hope you're following through and able to, um, you know, just continue on with what we're doing and able to follow the flow with which we're taking these um, these chapters and these lessons. So let's just start with the word of prayer and we'll dive right in. Heavenly Father, we thank you, God, for this uh, new day. Thank you, Lord, that you have connected each one of us uh, from different places to learn more about your institution. God, even as we uh, delve into um, bits and pieces of marriage, Father, we pray that your wisdom would be supreme. Lord, your understanding, Lord, would be great over our lives. Lord, for those of us who are in the institution of marriage, may we conduct ourselves, Lord, in a way that is uh, pleasing to you, Lord, that will give you glory, uh, marriages, Lord, that are testaments to you. And Father, we pray for young people who are listening in, God, who desire, Lord, to be married. Father, I pray that you will uh, build these truths into their hearts and uh, prepare their hearts, God, for what you have instituted be with us i pray for all those who are here all those who are yet to come god uh, thank you that uh, your grace is over each one of us we ask this in your precious name amen okay all right so over the last couple of weeks we have been looking at different uh, elements uh, of marriage we started off um, uh, we started off with uh, looking at communication then we did conflict resolution. Um, the last week we did being becoming a good team. Um, we're still on that same uh, topic of different elements in marriage. And today we're going to cover two, two aspects of it. One is uh, very practical in itself of managing a home. And the second one is about sex and sexuality, uh, another important aspect of marriage. Okay, um, so if you would have looked through the books, I'm not going through a chronological order, but you can be sure everything will be covered uh, by the end of this course. Okay, um, so I've just gone a little bit here and there, taken a lot more of the heavy uh, chapters earlier, and maybe the lighter ones um, later, depending on the uh, the topic in itself. Okay. So um, if, if, you're, if you have a book with you, we're on page 83. And if you have a soft copy with you, we are on um, page 83. Uh, 81. Yeah, page 80. Sorry. Sorry, page 79. 80, page 80. Okay. So we're on page 80. So if you'd like to follow through, uh, please, uh, please do so. Okay. So uh, in this first hour, we're just going to be looking and um, discussing about simple tips on how a uh, uh, family can manage their home. Right? Simple, practical tips that's needed for our everyday life. Okay, and uh, we we have we keep we've read this uh, earlier in Proverbs twenty four three and four that a house a home is built on the foundation of wisdom and understanding. Right. So, uh, in all that we do, even managing a home, how we manage it, it takes understanding. It takes wisdom to do so. And uh, this, a lot of these tips may be things that you've probably learned from your own homes. Uh, and, and these are things that will, can help you. Nevertheless, whenever you see maybe some aspects of the way that you manage your home needs a change, it's always good to rework something so that there is maximum uh, efficacy and maximum utility of your time and your resources and uh, whatever that that's required okay so um like we like it's like the chapter says it may be just knowledge it may be something that's common sense to most of us 
but nevertheless it's important to address these areas um, uh, because there are times that even these issues could cause um, conflicts in in couples okay so uh, the more the the better way of doing it is always the best right and it, it gives you it it actually helps you to succeed much better in your relationship so we will look at a few of this it may not or uh, may not be everything per se but then maybe the most important aspects of how do you manage home so the first uh, um, important part of of managing home is knowing where to stay okay uh, learning where to stay so uh, it's it's definitely necessary and important for a couple who are considering manage uh, marriage to really discuss about where they are going to make their home okay and it's something that should be discussed prior to marriage and maybe at the preparation your premarital preparation uh, I, I know sometimes in cultures depending on the culture that we all come from there is a certain tradition that one may follow which is uh, probably staying in the husband's uh, home um, and I, I know that there are different cultures that are matriarchal and so then they stay in the in the wife's home okay uh, i think among the northeastern uh, states uh, it's it's very matriarchal so you have the the groom actually going and staying in the in the bride's home so nevertheless i mean i think it, it uh, the, there are a lot of cultures that may have it very differently but a recommendation is that it's always good for a young married couple to live by themselves, which means to, to separate from their immediate family or their place of stay, so that there is greater freedom to really focus on their marriage relationship. Um, and also, for the, uh, in a way, to learn how to work together, adjust together, uh, do things together, um, divide uh, probably common work that needs to be done at a home. So it's it's a recommendation that it's good for couples to live by themselves away from their parents so that they learn uh, or in, on how to manage marriage and how to manage the family. Okay? And this is definitely something which is encouraged in the early years of marriage when there's a lot more focus that you can keep on each other rather than later when you know there are much more responsibilities that come your way uh, nevertheless there can be times and there could be situations or um, uh, maybe decisions that a couple could make or plan to live um, in either side of the of of the family either the husbands or the wives but this should come with a mutual understanding and an agreement to do so because um, uh, it shouldn't come in as a surprise right or it shouldn't be something that's not discussed because then it can lead to a lot of uh, conflict later uh, there should be an agreement i think especially if there is a understanding that that uh, that the couple is going to live with either side of the parents there should be an agreement that um, the interference the the way that um, uh, we, we had spoken about the inner sanctum right uh, that there shouldn't be an interference in that relationship and because a lot of problems can occur simply because parents are involved and interfere in a couple's life by making their decisions or by controlling what they do how they do things uh, or even interfering in in certain patterns uh, right of the new member that comes in or even interfering later at a time the way children are brought up so there should be an agreement that or there should be an expectation of the other members not interfering in this husband wife relationship okay um so it is like we like we said there could be different reasons why a newly married couple may need to stay with with one of the parents home this could be 
because of maybe financial constraints or probably practical uh, uh, issues or maybe there is a relocation. Or, however, uh, you know, to, the recommendation is to keep these times short and uh, for the newly married couple to set up their own space, their own place, uh, so that they can focus on their marriage and building their lives together. Okay, so that's the first one to be able to uh, stay independently. The second one is uh, how do you manage uh, schedules, uh, daily and weekly schedules? Um, so at this point of time, you know, in, in the current uh, time that we're living in, uh, both the husband and the wife may be working people, right? And uh, so what happens is, there can be differences in the way that each of them have their work schedules. So, uh, for example, if the husband's working a night job, the wife's working a day job, then the schedules kind of are not matching. And so what happens, that is, over time, that there gets to be a disconnect because there's so little time they have together, and that could definitely impact the marriage. So it's important to address these uh, situations um, and look at why priority needs to be given to the marriage and family, you know, just especially after a couple is married. Yes, career and opportunities and growth in, in maybe uh, personal career is, is good, is important. Nevertheless, the priority of a marriage and family, you're living together uh, you know, in your initial years, just to yourself happens only once, right? So it is important to schedule that. So if there are challenges like this, it needs to be planned. You need to plan ahead to work those schedules. Um, and and it, it's also, you know, with wisdom, we do say that if it is viable, if it is financially possible, it would be um, good to make any changes uh, in the way that the work timings or, um, uh, you know, work, uh, uh, work investment that happens. So making those changes is also important. So it could be like a change of a job or, uh, you know, reducing hours or maybe, uh, you know, probably taking a break also uh, can be recommended till a time the focus is on the marriage and, and uh, that priority is made. Okay. The next thing are certain household chores. Uh, and these household chores are many. Uh, nevertheless, uh, you know, there are a couple of ones that are written in the book of cooking, cleaning, laundry, grocery shopping, paying bills, and I'm sure that there, there is a whole lot more. Nevertheless, it is important for both um, the husband and the wife to share the responsibility of managing the home. Um, because managing a home is not a one-time job. It's something that needs to be done on a regular, consistent, daily basis. Some tasks are done daily, some tasks are done maybe weekly. Uh, nevertheless, there is a, there is a, uh, there's a rotor, there's a routine that, that needs to be, uh, that needs to take place. So it's always helpful that the tasks um, for the home are shared between the husband and wife. Uh, and uh, wherever it, it is not possible getting the support of outside help. Okay. So it is, um, it can be unfair, especially when both the husband and the wife are working for one of the members or for the wife to be carrying the entire load of the household tasks um, uh, herself. Uh, household tasks herself. So um, it's important to, uh, uh, you know, pitch in, uh, work alongside with the responsibilities, these responsibilities. Because as time goes by, when the responsibilities become more, when the children come into the picture, when there is um, aged parents that one needs to look after, or when there is uh, other other things like for the career or maybe ministry, uh, it be puts in a lot of strain on, on that one person. So all of this is one part of working together as a team, where each one is doing their part to help each, each other. And stepping in when there is a need for the other to come in okay the next that we look at is um, how we engage with technology the use of technology 
um, and and now with 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 our current the way that we currently see and process things everything is through through something with technology right and and that's become so much a part of our lives uh, uh even connecting with others doing our work um even administration anything that you see would probably need uh some form of technology or some form of device that you use so uh, it's it's yes in a way it's a blessing it's important to work through that however uh, it's important to know and understand uh, the balance of its use uh, because most of the time they're connected on um, maybe a phone or a device for our work. We feel a sense of pressure to keep being connected on it with, with matter of, of work, right? And so that in itself uh, takes away time from, from the home. Uh, or there could be um recreational activities like the television or any kind of social media that could again take up the free time often that's that's looked at as leisure right or a time of entertainment of a, or a time of switching off so it is important to have disciplines across this on the way that we use our phone uh, the television, maybe connecting with others through messaging, through emails, through calls, all of this needs to have some boundary. So uh, it's good that every member of the family, not just the children, keep their gadgets or distractions away at certain points, at certain times of the day, like maybe a meal time, or when everyone's connecting together, or maybe on a drive or um, you know, when, when everyone's sitting together probably uh, at, at prayer. So it's important to schedule, to important to limit and place some of those boundaries so that it doesn't seep in to the, to the family time, okay? There could be certain situations where there are emergencies and uh, that of course can be attended, um, you know, uh, but you know what we're looking at is as a general practice to keep certain boundaries in the way uh, technology and and the gadgets all are used. Okay, are we all here? Are we all? In? Okay, all right. Okay, thank you. Yes. Um, the next uh, part of it is what we look at is. What is important for families to do together is to have uh, times together of recreation, okay, or times of a vacation. Um, now, e each family may have different ways of doing this, and it could be, you know, some families do it uh, probably much more frequently, but then it's 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 just probably going out, or maybe it's a shopping together, or it's just doing a picnic together or going for a movie or attending a sport or attending a, a, a literary activity. It can be anything. Some kind of a recreation time will be helpful to connect. And also because it builds in the interests of, of others, right? So maybe it's one, one week or one month, it's following the interest of one of the members and then the next week it's someone else's so it is you're sharing with each other's um, interest and each other's company and as you're doing this there is uh, there is relaxation there is recreation so uh, it, it's good to identify what you can do to it what you can do together or what are the activities that you can do with each other so this is something that again has to be done intentionally planning knowing the Mm, a place you're going to go to, what is the budget that you're using for, and nevertheless, you, you know, you attempt to, to keep it uh, going, either for, for some families, like I said, it may be regular, it may be one every month, uh, it's just probably a day off, or it may be uh, once or twice a year with, with, a, with an extended time, whatever it is, however you're able to manage it, that should be good, okay? The next one we're going to look at is uh, how do we deal with money and, and budgeting or basically understanding finances uh, in family? How do we work through finances? So uh, you'd 
we we know that often money becomes uh, a problem generally in most marriages you know that is one of the areas of significant conflict uh, because we all have a different view or a different understanding of how money should be saved money should be used money should be invested uh, and and this also speaks probably of the kind of values or the ideas we have about about money and sometimes it is how we were raised what were what our lifestyles were what we have been used to what we've seen in our own family um what have been the experiences as a result of uh, money matters in our own homes so it so first and foremost it's important to understand each other in this area and come to some place of an agreement um so uh, the first foremost understanding is what does money mean uh to two people but what is what is money um represent to each person so for some it could be uh, like a sense of security for some it could be um uh, it could be a sense of independence for some it could be just a means uh, for for others it could uh, it could be uh something that you get so that you can bless others with so uh, there could be many other things or for some on, on the other side of it for some it could be uh, a sense of uh, um uh, uh, you know uh, fearlessness the fact that okay i have money and and that in itself keeps me safe so that there may be different things of the way that we see money and it's important to identify those those values so uh in in the um book um you have a, a, a small table that gives you uh, that that helps you understand what your values are about money and your assets and your possessions so it's a good thing to actually go through this and understand where you are when it comes to material possessions and money because it it really helps to uh know yourself as well as know what your partner's understanding of money is okay um so this is just uh, it it's just a reflection about what money really means to you what does it represent to you uh when we're looking at uh, financial uh, finance and financial planning one of the first things that we like to highlight as believers is uh giving to god's kingdom agreeing to tithe and giving to god's kingdom uh as we read in uh, proverbs 3:9 to 10 it says honor the lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase so we are agreeing to give to god whatever he has blessed us with we are giving to god there is also um the the verse in malachi chapter 3 verses 8 to 10 so it says will a man rob god yet you have robbed me but you say in what way have you robbed me robbed in tithes and offerings so it is to uh being being agreeable to give together to the lord or his work and that's something that you can come in agreement to Uh, it's important also to learn how to live with money to learn how to handle your finances uh, and also to learn to live with contentment with what you have without uh, a sense of one a uh, sense of greed or a sense of comparison uh, or even the sense of a feeling that you should be better off than others so it's it's important to live um with simplicity and also to be generous and and also serve god's purposes with money now as part of money apart from tithing one of the key important things that a, that a couple needs to um formulate is to be able to develop a budget deciding together what are the expenses that could come for the family um it's a good practice to do because it helps um uh helps both the couple to uh, both the husband and the wife to really formulate um what means within what means they should be living right and it's important to do that because um and and that's that, this is what we call as as wisdom 
right? And uh, to come together to understand what can, what is the income and what is the expenses, so that you're living um, through each month well, rather than falling short or being in absolute debt, or or even the other way, living very miserly and um, and stringently, so much so that you know. Uh, you don't even have three meals a day. So the, it's important to develop and come together to form that budget. And this happens only if both the husband and wife are open about their earnings, are able to share information about their income and develop a plan. Okay. Um, so so before we just, uh, uh, and, and we'll be looking at some of this uh, in the next part of it in saving and investing, uh, when you're developing a budget, it's it, it, it's good to have a mental breakup of a percentage. So if we work it backwards, we're saying that when you're tithing, you're tithing a minimum of ten percent. Okay. Now it can it can even go more than that, depending on uh, on on how much you're able to give. So let's say ten to twenty percent. Right. So there is. Uh, when that gets cut off, you know you have maybe a ninety percent or an eighty percent. Out of that, there is a maybe a twenty percent that you are investing, twenty percent you're saving, and the rest fifty percent is expenses. Now, this these percentages can can change. The fifty, twenty, twenty can change. I, I was just giving you the least. Um, the the most minimum basic one that is that that's useful and that's wise to do. So fifty percent of uh, expenses, twenty percent of saving, twenty percent of investing, and ten percent of tight. So when when you're actually able to understand this, it really helps in allocating um, uh, maybe for something in future. Like when you're saving a twenty percent, you're probably saving maybe for a maybe it's it's for an it's for an a set that you want to uh, want to gather. Maybe it's a house or a land. Um, I'm sorry, when you're investing, you're you're moving into something like that probably at a at a later point. Or you could be saving for that, or saving for buying a car or buying a house or something that you may need. To make life a bit more comfortable, so all of this actually helps, and it's it's a way of planning, in able to um, um, budget. Okay, uh, it, at at this with this alongside with this, it's also important for the couple to uh, come to certain goals, certain financial goals. Um, excuse me. Uh, agreeing on some financial goals, maybe certain short-term goals about you know what you would like to see, uh, uh, what what do you have? What are the goals that's there? So as as we were saying, you know there may be some smaller goals that you may have. Probably it's um, it's moving into another house or or buying a vehicle, or it can be a long-term financial goal, which is you know building a greater asset onto something or getting into a business or uh, any of that. But it's important to discuss this, right? And come with come to a plan that two people can work together because we need to use money wisely, especially if you are looking at developing or, or having some, some big goals in mind. It is important to use that money carefully. Okay. As part of... Uh, um, financial management, like I said, is also saving and investing. Now, they are saving and investing is a um, is is a wise thing to do, and it's good planning. What is saving and investing doing? Is it's actually making money for you, and it is important to save systematically. So there are very many ways that you can invest money and allow it to grow. And uh, the book actually talks about many different um, uh, systems or plans that are there that you can you can use. Uh, and uh, so, if if you do find yourself lacking understanding this, it's also good to consult a 
uh, a good financial advisor who can help you with this with this all right okay uh, i'm just going to stop here for a couple of minutes uh, is there any question any question that anyone has still where we covered right now No one? No question? OK, all right. So we'll go to the last two, which is the um, uh, uh, the relationship with the extended family. It may be parents, it may be in-laws, it may be the extended family, OK? Um, so we had made an emphasis of, and if you look through that entire space, there are many verses that talks about um, how you preserve and protect your one, your marriage, and also at the same time, the way that you honor your, 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 your parents um, and how you treat them. Okay, so there is a balance in all of this. Now, we, as we did emphasize that uh, there is the husband and wife living independently without the interference of the parents or the family members. Now, this does not mean that you do not, you disconnect or keep them away from you, okay? Because as, we, as you've read in scripture, and there are many verses over here, uh, it talks of Proverbs 18, 19, just quickly read them. Help your relatives and they will protect you like a strong city wall. But if you quarrel with them, they will close their doors to you. Uh, Proverbs 19, 26, he who mistreats his father and chases away his mother is a son who causes shame and brings reproach. Proverbs 20, 20, whoever curses his father or his mother, his lamp will be put out in deep darkness. Um, uh, Ephesians 2, uh, and three, honor your father and mother. It's the first commandment. Uh, and so it will go well with you and you will have a long life. So if you look at scripture, it really talks of how you need to hold parents in honor, hold them um, in, in respect and honor and bless them. So it is important to maintain cordial, loving relationships with your parents and your in-laws and continue to just bless them and, um, uh, you know, uh, have good relationships with them, maintain that healthy relationship with them. And it is important also to be able to show your love to them. Uh, so it's, we're not advocating that you disconnect or you distance, maintain good, cordial, loving relationships. Uh, however, being careful of not allowing them to um, influence uh, your marriage or, or impact or interfere with, with your marriage. Okay? Um, sometimes there can be younger couples who may need financial assistance from their parents uh, and they need help. So this is something that you do with mutual understanding. You need to come in agreement to, to do this. Okay? Uh, again, it's also not to treat one set of parents partially, it is to treat both of them equally and um, with love. Okay. The last one here is being able to care for the elderly or the widowed or often in your in your family. So there can be times um, when you know because of the challenges that life brings, there may be a need, or as parents become older, there may be a need for the young couple or for or a couple to take care of elderly family members um and it is and it is uh, it's not something we you know scripture talks about it it says uh, um in proverbs uh, sorry in, uh, james 127 it says what god the father considers to be pure and re genuine religion is this to take care of orphans and widows and their suffering and to keep oneself from being corrupted by the world. So it it is 
it is our responsibility to take care of their needs. So uh, this is where agreement needs to play, play, needs to take place as a husband and wife coming together in an agreement to address the needs of the extended family or the elderly family. And to be able to do this with support and, uh, uh, and, and, and your complete uh, understanding and wholeheartedness as you are taking care of, of the family. So doing it out of your reverence and your love for God so that um, uh, they're all supported. Okay. Um, so there are some of these, some of these um, areas that we've spoken about. Uh, generally, those that that is managed that needs to be managed at every home. Okay, uh, are there uh, any any reflections or any uh, any thoughts, any questions? You don't have to have only questions. You could also have some reflections. So, if there's someone who likes to unmute and speak, that would be good. That would be helpful. No one, no one has any thoughts, any questions? You know, actually, this is, um, you would find that a lot of marriages, uh, they have conflicts because of some of these areas. Um, we, may, we may think it, it is as simple, but these could be the sources of the conflict, like money. Money becomes a huge issue, or the use of um, uh, technology, where, where where both people are really busy at work or busy at um, entertainment, or you know, so that that could be it. Or even this uh, inequality about how uh, you know you take care of the home. There's a whole lot of burden on one person. Uh, so all of this actually causes a lot of conflict and strife. So this there should be, I, I believe that there should be a lot more discussion on this. OK, I think Rin has spotted a message about how to treat our family members when married is something new that I learned. OK, all right. OK, thank you. Thanks, Rin. Yeah, I, I think it's um, maybe I'd like to probably put in a, 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 a thought over here or maybe an observation of what um, what are some of the things that I've come across you know in the at times when I help marriages is um, the ability of uh, this could be generally the, the husband but this is not always true I have seen even wives not being able to cut off emotional connection with the parents and so uh, for every small thing there is a huge dependence um, that okay let for example the cooking doesn't happen in the home food is always bought from mom's house right so and uh, so so what happens is there isn't uh, you know the family the husband and wife don't learn to adapt, to change, to improvise, to eat burnt stuff. They don't learn it because there's always uh, parents bringing things to comfort the children. Um, but in actuality, when a young husband and a young wife are learning to do things on their own, there's a lot of things that are a lot of uh, learning, a lot of dynamics that's building up behind it's not just about bringing food on the table but there is coming to a place of agreement there is being patient with one another there is supporting one another there is encouraging one another after something is made there is cleaning up together all of this adds in value and skill right so uh, often i think parents themselves make the mistake of hoping to make 
things very comfortable for a young bride and groom so much so that you know everything when a home is set up and uh, the fridge is there the 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 things in the kitchen is there the car is there everything they just have to start living that in itself and, and i remember i think um, you know my parents telling me when they were married they had nothing they had to uh, really build on everything right from scratch because because one is they were not living with uh, my father's parents they had to move away from uh, their state and move to another state because of job issues. But that's when a lot about life and each other gets learned. And that's really, really significant, you know. So if you can weather through, uh, um, in, in family therapy, we say if a couple can weather through the first year of marriage, the significant changes happen in the first year and then it happens in the next 10 years. So that if that first year, is something that a couple can actually uh, weather through. You know, you see that uh, uh, there, there's a lot more of success. The success rate is a lot more in uh, in marriages. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. Anybody else? Very quiet class today. Yeah, something that I would also like to share is uh, uh, for, for my parents, the struggle was, you know, like my dad had to get all his sisters married. So my mother, <laughs> my mother faced the entire thing of in her initial a ages, like um, to build up our family, it was a little bit difficult because the entire financial strain was on my father because he had gone to Saudi. So they, the, my grandparents were looking out for my father to stand and uh, take care of everything. So I, as I was listening to this also, you know, like we learned a lot from our parents, the mistakes and things like how we should not do certain things. So it's like always I felt that, you know, we keep on learning in a marriage. It's new every and each marriage is so unique. And as you mentioned very rightly, that small financial things can become big conflicts. It, it might be a small thing of a very, it'll, it'll, it's not even, maybe we won't even use that thing afterwards, but it might be a small thing, but that just to buy that, you know, like a, buying a pet or, you know, <laughs> the, this can uh, become major conflicts and it, it is actually unnecessary. And, uh, I think it's, we should all, I felt that as I was listening today, like these are things that we should submit to the Lord every day and ask his guidance and put things, the financial things, give it to his hand first so that everything else will fall in place. But uh, God is the one who teaches us, right? So each time we learn something and I'm so thankful that even now I'm, God is teaching me and I'm grateful for all that I'm learning. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. Thanks so much. That is, that is a, that, yeah, I, I think we're, I'm sure a lot of us have, maybe especially those of us who are married or we've seen our parents, uh, we have a lot of stories in this, um, in this uh, uh, part. I think one more thing that maybe I'd like to share is coming from, uh, you know, Southern state in, in, in in India, Kerala, one of the things that I've seen across a lot of homes in Kerala uh, is the way that um, the woman is the one who actually bears the entire brunt of the home, uh, and it can it actually can be extremely taxing. In fact, uh, uh, a lot of times men marry just so that they have they have another helper at home for the mother uh, right because uh, it, 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 some of the homes you know, i'm talking about traditional homes in kerala maybe it's changing right now right now i think the the issue is that all the children have left and they go uh, abroad and the elderly parents are stuck back in kerala so that's the new problem that's come here but i'm talking about maybe a couple of uh, decades earlier is that uh, marriage happens because they need 
a woman an extra hand of help in the house to take care of things. And so the burden just, uh, and you know, that, that culture just keeps passing on where uh, the man just goes out for work and there's no other contribution that he brings into the home and it's the woman who slogs and thing. And so you build another generation thinking that it's a normal practice, it's okay to do that, you know, and uh, we still see that being infiltrated uh, within our community. Um, I, I know I have some people from Kerala here, I don't know if you'll agree with, the, with my observation or you may have a different observation. Anybody? Okay. All right, um, we'll close our, so we, we've just completed the managing home. Uh, what we can do, we're, we're the next hour we will be looking at sex and sexuality. So let's take a break. Um, we will come back at 11 o'clock after our break. <laughs>